You know, it seems like at least once a year there's a movie that everybody makes their mind up about before they even go see it, and the movie is dead on arrival. Well, this year's movie is The Crow. And based off of the reviews, you would think that I didn't know what hell awaited me. I do. Hey, what is up everybody? It's Nick here and today I'm going to give you guys my spoiler free review for The Crow. Now I might get into a little bit of spoilers in the back half. The movie has been out almost a week, but I'll warn you before that happens. So if you don't want any spoilers, you're safe to continue watching and you will be told when it is no longer safe. Now, I believe what I said in my opening monologue is very fair. The Crow is a beloved film. There are people that adore it mainly for Brandon Lee's performance and sadly the tragedy that occurred on the set of that movie. Now, a lot of people were not going to go see this movie no matter what. They heard that we were getting a modern day Crow film and they said, no, thank you. A lot of people considered it blasphemous to Brandon Lee and to that original film. Now, I'm not somebody that's ever been in love with the original film. I like it, it's solid, it's cool, but it's not a movie I've ever been head over heels for. So when this movie was announced and I saw that Bill Skarsgård was gonna be starring as Eric Draven, I was like, oh dude, I'm in, I'm totally in. And I am happy to tell you guys right now that not only does this movie not try to replicate the original movie, it really does kind of stand on its own and the marketing did not do this film any favors. So getting my negatives out of the way first, because I do have some with this film. This did not go over totally peachy keen with me. First of all, there are pacing issues in this movie. Now I understand that you really want to buy into the love story of Eric and Shelley, and it's kind of necessary as a viewer so you can understand and feel the emotion for what is about to happen. But the pacing of that love story at times is very haphazard and sometimes it drags. Sometimes things are damn near repeated and we're like, what, we're doing this again? We, we just saw this. So the first half of this movie specifically definitely has some pacing problems. Also, I don't think FKA Twigs was perfectly cast here. I really don't care for her as Shelly. And that's not to say that she gives a bad performance because I don't think she does. I think she's just average at best across the board. And sadly, I feel like that stands out a little bit more because I think that Bill Skarsgård really is giving it his all. And when you have one person totally devoted to the role and one person that just kind of seems like they're going through the motions, it sticks out like a sore thumb. And then finally, the last negative I can really think of is the transformation that happens with Eric happens very quickly. It's almost like, hey, we're not trying to be the original movie, but we hope you've seen the original movie so we don't have to give you a ton of backstory. It definitely seems kind of shoehorned in there. It happens and then it is just done and you're like, oh, well, okay, I'm just going to accept that. Now, as somebody that's seen the original movie, it you know, it's not hard to draw the lines from A to B, but if you're somebody that has it, you have no idea what this is. You don't know anything about the source material. You might've been a little confused because it's just dropped and then moving on. So those are my negatives for the movie. Now, starting off with my positives, I have to say Bill Skarsgård is amazing as Eric. I absolutely love his performance in this movie. And look, I'm gonna talk about how the marketing for this movie did not do it any favors. And part of that is the appearance of Eric in this film because it gave you a lot of Suicide Squad vibes, right? You saw that and you were like, oh my God, what is this? It plays so much better in the movie. It makes total sense and it fits the character. But if you're just seeing promotional stills, you're like, this is weird. Look, Bill Skarsgård chews up the scenery. He is absolutely great in this movie. Whether it's him playing the reserved kind of loner to the angry, vengeful, I will do whatever I have to comic book anti-hero. He is so good in the movie. On top of that, the action in this movie is done incredibly well. It is a hard R rating. I need to stress that to you guys. If you were worried that they might play it a little safe, oh my god, no. This movie is hard R. There were multiple kills in this movie that I like audibly kind of went, oh nice, in the theater because they just, they didn't hold back. There was a lot of really good gore and really good effects in here too. I gotta shout out the CGI because I feel like a lot of it, it doesn't really take center stage all that much, which I think is to the movie's benefit. There's a lot of CGI on the periphery, so they don't really draw attention to it, and I think it works well that way. And when you do see some of it, it looks gnarly, it looks pretty good. I mean, the movie had a $50 million budget, and it's definitely on screen here. 
I also have to say that although I did have issues with FKA Twigs as Shelly, I can tell you that I bought into the whole revenge for love second half of this movie because of Bill Skarsgård. The pain in him, the anger. He was, I mean, just, oh, he, he just does it so well. I didn't necessarily need to believe in her all that much because I believed in him. And I believed that this character would absolutely do anything by any means necessary to right what he felt was a wrong, and it is a wrong. Also, I have to give a shout out to Rupert Sanders here. Now, I know that Rupert Sanders is not a very well-known director, and I think the thing he's most known for is being the guy that broke up Robert Pattinson and Kristen Stewart. Having said that, I think he does well here. You know, aside from the first half with some pacing issues, I actually kind of like the direction in here. This kinetic, fast-moving second half of the movie being very action-heavy and gory, I really liked it. I liked the bent he brought to this movie. There was a nice visual flair here that it kind of stood out, and it gave this movie a lot of personality. Now, I told you guys that this doesn't really try to replicate the original film, and that's another pro, because I haven't read the original, you know, comic book strips of this. I don't know the exact origin, but I've heard people say that this is more cribbing off of that than the 94 movie, because he's not even mentioned as Eric Draven. He's just mentioned as Eric. Now, obviously, we all understand who he is, but they clearly are trying to tread new ground here. It's almost like an alternate universe crow storyline. And I actually really, really liked that a lot. And I feel like when you're trying to do something with existing well-known IP and you're doing it new and fresh, more power to you. I also really liked the score and the soundtrack. This movie had really nice sound design. And at multiple points, I was like, is that this song? Is that what I think it is? Oh, that's cool. And then even some of the actual composed music at certain moments, especially in the action sequences, stands out. And it's stuff that I could definitely listen to for like just my own listening pleasure. Now, the last thing I want to say about this movie before I give you guys my overall thoughts is shame on Lionsgate. Shame on you. Look, everybody was calling this emo John Wick. I was too. Everybody was looking at those promotional stills and seeing that trailer and thinking they understood what this movie was going to be. And not only does it not play out that way at all, as I said earlier, the appearance of Eric is totally warranted. He's not cosplaying for dramatic effect. It works for the story. It's organic. It's natural. It feels very lived in. It fits his character really well. It fits the story really well. And again, I am deeply disappointed in the powers that be that marketed this film because they set this movie up for failure. There were people that were already skeptical because it was a modern day supposed remake of The Crow. That was already kind of hollowed ground for a lot of people. And then when you market it the way you do, it's just you're not going to get a lot of casual moviegoers in there. So I'm really sad to see that it's underperforming because it is a movie I quite liked and I'd like to see a follow-up to it. It'll never happen, but I would have liked to have seen that. So again, you got to be better. You got to be better. If you're going to spend $50 million on a movie that is a well-known IP that means a lot to people, you need to put out there an accurate representation of your film. Because I promise you, even if you don't like this movie, I know you will like it better than all of the marketing materials you saw for it. I can guarantee you that. So at the end of the day, I would say I recommend The Crow. I absolutely do. Now, Again, as somebody that doesn't have this massive love for the original, I don't know how I would compare the two and say which one I think is better right now. And that's not really the point. The point is, you as a viewer, should you go spend your money and your time to see The Crow? Well, if you're looking for an outstanding performance by Bill Skarsgård with a ton of just great action and gore that definitely feels like this unique, otherworldly kind of fantasy tale, I think you're going to like this movie. But I want to hear down below what you guys thought of The Crow. Did you see it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Do you want to see it? Did my review make you decide whether or not to see it? Discuss it all down below in the comment section with me. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please leave a like on this video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. This is Nick of the Lost River Drive-In, and I'm pulling out.